For this lesson, I'm going to show you how to draw a simple uh, garden for the background of whatever flower you're going to do. So you will be adding a three-dimensional element to your garden. So you're going to want to leave that central area um, a bit more open. So um, I'm using here a piece of eight and a half by 11 paper. Um, if you got your sketchbook, you can use that and that's seven by 10. Um, but you want to basically come in and divide it about a third of the way up. Um, maybe two thirds of the way up. Let's do that. I'll do about five inches here. I'm going to do around five inches and I'm just going to draw a line. Um, and then I'm going to draw another line like so. And I'm actually going to flip that paper around because I think the horizon line will be better a little bit lower. So uh, I'm going to take this and I'm going to draw a line across. So I have five inches up on top and then I have uh, three and a half inches down on the bottom. Um, what that's doing is creating a horizon line. Uh, and you can decide whether you want a low horizon line or a higher horizon. Uh, horizon line whichever way you want it you can flip the paper uh, and it will be whichever direction you want so um, and if you want more things happening in the lower part of your garden you can put more space here if you want more of the things happening in the upper part of your garden you can keep it lower down there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by creating a tree and a tree you can simply start coming in with a uh, rectangle let me make this focus uh, a rectangular shape and then sort of flare it out at the bottom a little bit so it starts to create some roots and then uh, think about where the branches are going to go so generally they come in and then they sort of build off of each other and you can decide what that's going to look like, whether you want to make them curvy or however it is that you would like to make them work. But basically you want to have some interior branches and then you can just decide what shape do you want the leaves to be on your tree. Okay, so I just have, now I have uh, my tree and then I can add some details there. I could make a tuft of grass around the bottom. Uh, and then uh, to enter the garden, you're going to want some kind of uh, path to uh, go through it. So I'm going to show you um, the best way to make that path is pick a point off here on the horizon line and then just figure out where you want the path to be entered. So I'm going to go a little bit broader on the bottom and then I'm going to just create a curving line and then I'm going to echo that line here but then as it gets closer to the bottom, I'm going to just have it get a little bit more open, right? Because it's closer to you, so it would be uh, more open. So now I have a tree, and I can go ahead, and if I wanted to make some flowers or other colors here, you can go ahead and put those there. Uh, you can decide if you want some kind of a sun or a moon in the sky but just try not to put it in the corner like with the little rays coming out uh, try and make it somewhere in the center and then maybe I want to make a smaller tree here to show um, that it's a little bit further back in space and maybe I want that tree to be a slightly different shape so I'm going to come in here and put that there uh, and then maybe I want some bushes okay uh, and then I am going to come in here and put some little details there. Uh, and then you can decide if you want to do like, you know, your starry night example uh, where you have some different gestures in the sky. And you can sort of fill that in. You could even make some hills if you want some hills back there. Uh, and this could be all flowers in the front. It's up to you. It's your garden um, and so that's just a basic way that you can lay it out and be uh, and then I am going to come in here and put some little details there uh, and then you can decide if you want to do like you know your starry night example uh, where you have some different gestures in the sky 
and you can sort of fill that in. You could even make some hills if you want some hills back there. Uh, and this could be all flowers in the front. It's up to you. It's your garden. Um, and so that's just a basic way that you can lay it out and be. So once you have your garden uh, drawn, you can go ahead and erase any guidelines. Um, and then uh, what I recommend is that you go between using colored pencils as well as the markers and just start filling in your drawing, uh, planning out the colors as you go. Uh, I find that watering down the markers is a good place to start and that again is using a piece of plastic where you color the marker on top and start filling in each uh, individual area with a base color. On that base color you will then be able to um, add uh, colored pencil to bring out more texture and line detail. So. Uh, if you go straight with the markers, you are going to get a more saturated color and it's going to not be as painterly. And again, uh, the whole idea behind the Impressionist artists was they, what they wanted to do was capture uh, gesture movement and light. So by using uh, the markers as watercolor, you're going to be able to build those details up a little bit. So um, that is what you'll do and just start filling in areas uh, with uh, different colors. You can experiment with the mark that you're making to create uh, more uh, gestural marks. Uh, and then once you have those down, if you want to go with a lighter color, you could actually just go on top of those marks with the marker. and. Uh, you can see that then your color is going to be uh, more saturated. Uh, in addition to that, if you wanted to just experiment with putting the marker down first and then taking water and pulling that marker around, you can do that too. But what you really want to try and focus on is creating um, nice concentrated color with a diversity uh, of uh, different types of variety of mark making and you can just do that for the whole thing.